going to be doing part of the semester two exam for geometry, starting with polygons. Polygons um, are shapes, and it's probably the unit you remember the least because it's been a while. And there's some formulas that you need to remember for polygons. How many sides does a polygon have if the measure of each exterior angle is 45? Exterior angles total 360 degrees. So if we want to know how many sides there are, we can take 360 degrees and divide it by the 450 we know each of them is. We're asking the question, how many 45 degree angles are in 360 degrees? There are eight, so there are eight sides. This is an octagon. Measure of each interior angle for a 15 gone. So we don't want the total, we want just one. So to find the sum of all of my interior angles, I'm going to use my formula n minus 2 times 180. And so my sum is going to be 15 minus 2 times 180, or 2,340. But I want, don't want to know just the sum of all the angles. I want to know what one of them is. So I'm going to take my total and divide it into each of those 15 angles that we have, and that would be 156 degrees each. If we have um, each angle on the inside of a polygon, and we need to know what x equals, we're going to add up each of these angles, and since there are four angles, we know the total has to be 360. So we're going to say 2x minus 2 plus 4x minus 2 plus 85 plus 2x plus 15 equals 360 degrees. And what we're going to do is throw that into Desmos. And we're going to get... 33. The other thing we need to remember from Unit 7 is that specific quadrilaterals have properties. Parallelograms in particular, the opposite sides are congruent. So 8x and 4 quantity x plus 3 have the same measure. And so we can throw this straight into Desmos. Or, if we want to, we can solve it ourselves. X is going to equal 4. The next thing that we'll need to remember are right triangles. Now, in right triangles, we talked about trigonometry and Pythagorean theorem. So, looking at uh, the first one here, we have an angle which immediately is telling me this is probably a trig problem, and it wants to know the length of AC, so it wants to know this length here. The first thing I need to do is label my triangle. This is my hypotenuse, this side is opposite of my theta, and this is adjacent. So since I have adjacent and hypotenuse, this would be cosine, 58 degrees, 14 over x, you would type that straight into Desmos, and you would get 26.4191881, which, if we're going to round, this is my four. This next question is asking us something very similar. Which of the following could be used to find x? So here's where my theta is, and if I label each of my sides here. We can set up each of the trig functions. We could set up sine 37 equals 15 over x. We could set up cosine 37 equals 20 over x. And we could set up tangent 37 equals 15 over 20. Um, X, so which one of those is my answer choice? D. 
B is one of those Pythagorean is one of those trig relationships. For number seven, we know the angle of depression is 62, and if we know the angle of depression, it's the same thing as the angle of elevation. We want to know the closest distance to the height of that building. Again, we're going to label theta, hypotenuse, this is the opposite, this is my adjacent, and since I'm dealing with opposite and adjacent, this is tangent. 62 equals x over 100, and we're going to type that straight into Desmos, and we receive 188.1, closest thing to that is just an even 188. A beam is supported by a wall, uh, and we need to find the height of the wall. So. We are dealing with tangent again, because this is where our x is. So tangent 48 equals 7 over x, and we just type that straight into Desmos. We're going to get 6.302, and the closest that, to that is 6. The next type of questions we could get from this unit are about right triangles, specifically which cannot be the side of a triangle, um, a right triangle in particular. And so when we're looking for at sides of right triangles, we're thinking of Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we're going to check that our c squared does in fact equal our a squared plus our b squared. And it does for this first one, does for this one, it does for this one, but it's not going to work for this one here. 13 squared is 169, and then 5 squared plus 8 squared is only 89, so this does not make a right triangle. Given the diagram to the right, what is the length of the diagonal? So this is my diagonal. We want to know the length of it. The height for this rectangle is 8, and the length is 15. Again, this is Pythagorean theorem, with my C being the diagonal. So when I set up my A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we're going to do 15 squared plus 8 squared equals X squared, and we're going to type that straight into Desmos. We're going to get that the length through that diagonal, that beam, is going to be 17. The last little bit of review that I wanted to make sure I got in was from our Unit 10 Transformations Unit. We need to talk about symmetry and then um, rotations and a reflection. First type of question is what type of symmetry does this figure have? Does it have line symmetry? Can you fold it? Can you fold it here? Sure can. It does have line symmetry. Point symmetry, it does not have point symmetry. If I flipped this upside down, we would be looking at something like this, so it won't have point symmetry. So neither does it have both, neither does it have neither. Line symmetry is our best option. If we're going to rotate something 180 degrees, we're going to rotate it so that it's all the way upside down. The easiest way to do this is to take my paper and rotate it 180 degrees so that it is now upside down and then read it like it's a normal graph. So my B prime comes to 2, negative 1. My C prime is now at 8, negative 1. And my A prime is now at 5, negative 8. Last but not least, we're talking about our reflection for this is reflected over the line y equals 
x, and we're only really worried about y. Now remember for my rule y equals x, my x's become y's and my y's become x's. So if we look at point y, all I'm going to do is switch my x's and my y's. So my new point y prime is going to be negative 4 comma 3.